Oh, I don't think it's depressed, actually. I think it's that people are inspired to look at their life and say, wow, in this world of opportunities, where would I like to spend my time? You know, what adventures do I want to go on? Uh, what things do I want to do see or experience? So, yeah, I don't think it comes from a place of depression as much as it is curiosity and hope and looking for something really cool to do with their life. Yeah, so the big five for life are the five things that you most want to do, see, or experience in your lifetime before you die. So the five things that are so big, so powerful, so amazing, that if you were to do or see or experience those five, then you could, on your deathbed, in the last few moments of your life, when you're really, really old, you could say that your life was a success, as you defined success. So it's not about someone else saying, oh, this is what you need to be doing. It's about you saying for yourself, what would create an awesome life for me? And uh, then mapping out those five things. And then focusing your time and energy and resources on those five things. Uh, so number one on my list is to have a loving relationship with the people that matter to me. Uh, number two is to travel the world. I love to travel and as much as I've traveled, there's still so much to see. Um, the third one is to master mind over matter. So the ability to realize the way that our thoughts and our beliefs uh, dictate our actions and the way in which we live. Uh, the fourth one is to inspire as many people as possible through the books that I write and the things that I do. And the last one, which is the one that makes everybody laugh, is to write a song that breaks the top 10 of the pop charts. <laughs> Yeah, so the Big Five for Life book was written in the context of a great leader, and the Big Five for Life sequel book actually continues the story and profiles an amazing organization in uh, Montreal, Canada. And so I think certainly reading the books and taking a look and underlining things and saying, wow, that could totally work for us is fantastic. But the overarching philosophy is as we look at the next generation of success for businesses, where is it going to come from? And in my worldview, that the best of the best companies, and by best of the best, I mean the ones who are treating their employees fantastic, have a clearly defined purpose, are executing on that purpose day in, day out. They live their values. Uh, they do what they do very well. They will attract the best of the best talent. And so it's sort of like stocking your sports team with all the all-stars who play well together, who know exactly what the goal is. They're going to succeed. And when they succeed, they're going to crush the other players, the other competition. And so I love that because I love it when the good teams win, the good players, the honest and integrity players win. And I see that as the future of business. So that's doing right by people, having a clear sense of purpose and doing right by the world.